It's game day for GB women here, their first game in this qualification tournament in Astana. Indeed, GB's first game for four years since that tournament in China, which, as I say, was four years ago. But they come into this game in good spirits. They were up early this morning. They had a good skate on the ice. The coaching staff went through a few drills with them. Very good to see a very positive training session indeed. And now, of course, they arrived at the rink a couple of hours before face-off with a real game face on. They look really ready for this first game in this tournament, taking on Mexico, of course, who came through the first qualification stage. And here are the highlights. Just under a minute gone into the offensive zone comes Cruz with the number 14 on her back. She goes all the way from one side of the ice to the other. And then, oh, it's deflected in. Cruz shoots. And that's the first goal of the game. Mexico score. A deflection of Bowell. And it's 1-0. Cruz comes into the offensive zone. Goes from right to left. Good work from her. She still has possession of the puck. Comes to the blue line. Shot comes through traffic. Takes a deflection in front of Samantha Bowell. But... She does enough just to fend play behind the net. One and now it's loose. And that's gone in for a second goal. It's 2 0 to Mexico. Well, there's 15 seconds remaining on our penalty there, and I'm not quite sure. Um, it was like a backhand shot on the power play. 58 seconds remaining in the period, and GB here are 2 0 down. Um, you know, they're. they're <laughs> We need to get this period over with and get in the dressing room and let the coaches have a talk with the team and, and come out and sort this out. GB with some chances in front. Adams once more. Right hand side. That pass is a little a straight power play over for Great Britain. So Mexico are back to full strength. Adams now shoots. It's a touch in front. And there's a shot in front once more. And it goes in. And GB has scored. It is 2-1. I don't know who got the final touch, but GB scored a scramble, and they're right back in this game. Well, 7.22 to go in the game. I think it was uh, Kim Lane that actually got the last touch to put it in. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to wait for the answer. There's a lot of bodies in front of the net there, but, you know, very late in the game, we've, we've, got, a, we've got the goal on the board. 15 seconds to go on the power play for GB into the final 100 seconds of this third period. Douglas, now left-hand side, and it's Marsden. Marsden's having a stick held. Pass comes out in front. Can GB get anywhere in the final few seconds of the five on four? No, they can't. So we're back to full strength. Saffron Allen shoots. Saffron Allen has leveled the game up at 2-2. Well, the worst. since she come on for that, since Saffron Allen come on for that shift, she's very unlucky there at the start, and then she just picked the puck up there and roofed it top shelf. She tied the game 2-2, 1.21 to go in the third period, 1.21 to go in this game, and GB have uh, tied it up, and hey, who knows what can happen in another one minute, 21 seconds. It's 2-2 at the moment, we're going to overtime. Can GB sneak this in dramatic fashion? It is Henry coming forward. It's loose for a moment. Oh my word! Angela Taylor has scored! And GB lead by 3 to 2! Oh my god! Oh my lordy! One minute to go in this game. GB 2 1 down, 3 2 up. Angela Taylor, one times the shot, puts the puck through the netminder's legs. James Ashton. You won that game somehow, but I guess as a coaching staff, you'll be a little bit frustrated with the performance. Yeah, it's always hard. I mean, we had a high expectations with the team. We had to make some tough um, selections from the squad, which everyone knows about. We brought a team out that we thought would be able to compete at this high level um, and also try and help us progress into the next qualification round. Um, Training's been well, and um, we did, were here uh, 24 hours earlier, so we have had time to prepare. I just think we're uh, very slow um, to get out of the starting blocks, and a couple of small mistakes from the team um, allowed Mexico two goals, and then you're basically chasing the game from there on in, which um, was very difficult. It did feel, though, at one point in that third period, didn't it, that it, that it wasn't going to come? Yeah, it did. I mean, we had... Um, 
a very um, sharp discussion at the end of the first period. The end of the second period, that period went very quick. Um, and we managed to have a little break, a sit down and a talk for before the start of the third period. We did change some lines. Um, what was really good to see was the experienced players that we know and we had um, were able to deliver. And what was good was our younger players still competed and um, we did at some points drop down to just the two lines but every single player on the bench was still fully committed um, knowing that we were basically doing it for the result so it was the result for the team not just for the results for the individuals even though it may have been frustrating a team a good team has to find a way to win when what, 81 seconds to go you you were two one down so to to find that it's weird, isn't it? Because I guess the coaching staff, you're frustrated, but you've got to credit them that the fact that they could do it. It is, but what's um, what's very important um, for all of the coaching staff is to not show your frustration, because I think if if you show you're frustrated, um, the players pick up on that, and sometimes then that can almost make them feel slightly vulnerable because they think that you're not actually doing what you want them to do. So we just had to be very calm, and we just had to say, look, we've made changes; they will they will happen. Something will come. We had lots of shots. I think we had shifts, three, four shifts before we scored the goals where we had a lot of good shots and fair play to Mexico. They played, I think, Netherlands in um, the pre-tournament friendly, worked really hard. And for a team that's qualified up to this group um, to put that up against us, fair play. The goalie played well. The coach was very, very good and he set out his team um, with one plan and that was to stop us scoring. We managed to, very late. Um, hopefully that won't happen again. But that's ice hockey. You, it's all about tactics. And credit to them as well because you weren't getting those like clear cut chances because they were blocking those lanes, putting their bodies on the line as well. So they, I mean, I think some of them were in tears at the end. They were heartbreaking because they they did really give it their all. They did, um, which was what we said to our players. We were getting shots off. Sometimes we weren't getting them the best way, and um, we were either going a little bit too late or too early. Um, and I think one Mexico player took a shot in the head. Yeah. Uh, they, they put their bodies on the line for nothing to get to the goal crease. We adapted our play. We weren't going to be able to score from shooting far out. So we had to crash the goalie. We got two goals from crashing the goalie, pucks close and basically driving it in. It's something that the girls now have learned that you can play very attractive hockey and you can pass the puck around very well. But passing it around doesn't necessarily put it in the net. Sometimes you have just got to be gritty and you do have to grind out a result, which we did do today. That's the thoughts of the GB assistant coach, James Ashton. And I'm now joined by, well, the hero with one minute remaining, Angela Taylor. Angela, first of all, let's talk about the goal. Yeah. It opened up for you and you just hit it perfectly, didn't you? Yeah. Um Wow, we, I probably didn't want it to be quite as close as that, but it felt amazing. I just remember telling Kim to drive the net and I knew if I got the puck just to, to get it on there and she did a great job screening the goalie. So uh, probably hurt for the goalie, but yeah, it feels amazing right now. <laughs> Have you ever known, I mean, you play for GB Women a lot, obviously yeah. a number of years ago. It was a weaker opposition and maybe we'll touch on that in a minute, but have you ever known such a, a breathtaking comeback than this one? I think we, I'm not sure if it was a comeback, but we had a real nail biter um, quite a few years ago now in Hungary, maybe 2008 or something. We, I think we won in penalty shots, but we came back and brought it to overtime. So, yeah, great. It's still great. That's hockey. We don't want to win 20 nil. You know, it's a great game. So, yeah, we're all really chuffed. Probably, though, you, you, with all due respect to Mexico, you probably didn't expect to be in that position, did you? I mean, we, for me personally, I knew nothing about Mexico um, and I was really impressed. I thought like all the credit should go to them. I don't think that we played badly at all. I think they played brilliantly. They played really smart. You can tell they've got a good system um, and the girls out there, I mean, they were really on us every time we had the puck. Um, they had no respect for us at all, which is great. And I, I have to, like, if I had a hat, I would take it off to Mexico. I thought they were brilliant. And it's for me, you know, being a bit older, it's so fantastic to see countries like Mexico, who I wasn't even sure had a team beat place so brilliantly. So for me, it's like it's really great for women's hockey that it's really progressing like that. So it was from I thought it was a brilliant game. Yeah. How do you keep calm? You know, in that third period, mm. trading two 0 and then into mm. the dying stages, a minute and a half to go, you're two one down. Yeah. Is it important just to stay focused, believing it could still come? I mean, it's everyone's different, really. I mean, for me, I need to always stay kind of calm. Um, just for the kind of player I am, I don't think I did a brilliant job of staying calm today. I was getting a bit frustrated at the end. Um, but 
yeah, I mean, everyone's different. I try and make sure I'm smiling on the bench and having fun and then I play well. So if I put any pressure on myself, then I won't play. So, yeah, I've just tried to... I know when uh, Africa or Saffron scored, I went on the ice and I had a bit of a joke with Katie Henry and uh, I think that probably released the pressure a bit and then we went right down and scored, so, yeah. Just had a feeling we, we talked about it on, on the commentary on, on the BBC mm -hmm. myself and Andy French. If, if you got one, yeah. the others would follow. And when it yeah. was two two, we talked about how next attack would be crucial. Is, yeah. is that the feeling you had on the bench? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we knew we had to to get one. I think maybe an error that we made ourselves was that we were kind of shooting on every opportunity. It's maybe we didn't move it, uh, distribute the puck as well as we as we could have. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, we didn't know anything about Mexico. They came in, got a couple quick goals, respect to them. And, and I mean, they held it really well. They played brilliant in the defensive zone. They forechecked really well. And for us, yeah, we wanted to dig one in and see what happens. But um, I don't, I didn't have the feeling as soon as we get one, it will be 10. Like, not at all. I thought Mexico were brilliant today, so. Yeah. How much can you take from this game now into Poland tomorrow? Because the way it ended must give you a massive boost. Yeah, I think it, it gives us a massive boost. I know like for some of the younger players, hopefully it didn't give them too much of a boost. You know, you need to kind of yeah. stay on an even keel. Um, not, you know, not for the bad shifts, don't worry about them too much. For the good shifts, you know, enjoy them. So for me, I mean, tomorrow's another day. I don't really mind what happens really if it's if we'd won 5-0 or one like that. So for me, just get back out there, put my skates on and play. But I think for us, hopefully it's a, a boost that we have something to play for tomorrow for sure. <laughs> That's Angela Taylor on Ice Hockey UK in association with McDonald's. And I'm standing in the exact spot where she scored that dramatic game-winning goal with one minute remaining. It was a breathtaking finish. It reminded me of GB playing two years ago, the men in Netherlands, when they just came from behind and managed to win a game in overtime. There was two quick goals then and here tonight with the women. They've scored at 58 minutes and 41 seconds and then at 59 minutes to win that game. And Angela scored from this spot and the elation on, on the GB bench was a sight to behold. But they have to go again now. It's game two and it will get more difficult for GB as the game goes on. Mexico came into this game, of course, as the lowest ranked team and they nearly gave GB a fright. 2-0 up and GB winning the game with some perseverance by three games to two. But tomorrow, as I said, they go again. 3 p.m. against Poland, 9 a.m. back in the UK. That's your time in the UK. And the games again will be on the BBC Sport website and on BBC Radio 5 Live Sports Extra. But what a dramatic start to this first game. Thanks for watching this exciting edition of Ice Hockey UK TV in association with McDonald's. And I'm just glad that we managed to bring you a GB victory.